Welcome back to Simple Sado. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. To kick off the new year, we are going to make a walnut loaf and we are going to use these oval proofing baskets. So here's the ingredients we're using. We got some strong white flour. We got something called purple wheat and alongside with the walnuts, it will create an almost purple dough. So that's also why we're leaving on the shells on the walnuts. Any kind of uh, substitute could be used, maybe pecan nuts or any kind of other nuts, but they won't draw out as much color to the dough as these will. We got our sourdough ready at peak, double in size. It's wet at the top and it's full of air. And this one is only made on wheat got some hot water and we got some salt so we are ready to start and if you're new here please like the video and please subscribe to our channel to help us reach a even bigger audience here in 2022 we are very grateful for all the the new people that have joined our channel so let's get started there is two approaches to this recipe the first one is where you blend your walnuts and then you can pour over some hot water and they will draw out some more color. You will also get a more dense loaf if you do it that way because the gluten strings will have a hard time forming. So the recipe we are doing today will be adding the walnuts later, which means we'll get a more open crumb and a better texture in our bread. So it's very different what people prefer, which kind of method. The first method, you'll get a more purple bread, but it will also be a lot more dense. Okay, so the recipe calls for 750 grams of water. And this water is lukewarm. Never use cold water because then your dough will just stand still and not proof and ferment for a long time before it reaches the room temperature. So 750 grams of water. And I'm going to add my flour, 100 grams of whole grain. In this case, it's purple wheat. It could be any kind and 100 grams of strong white flour. I'm going to just mix it on low speed for around two to three minutes. We just want to make sure that the flour has absorbed all the water. So low mixing speed for two minutes and I'm going to bring the camera over here so you guys can see how it looks. So the dough has finished mixing here, only took two minutes and I just want to get off all the, the dough here from the hook as much as I can. And the dough looks like this and I'm going to use my dough cart to just scrape down the sides. And then I just want to cover it for auto lease for well, around half an hour is more than enough since there's so much white flour. If there were more whole grain, I would probably auto lease this for at least an hour to two hours. That would be enough. So like this, I'm going to leave it to rest and then I'm going to add my sourdough later. So while I'm waiting for my dough, I'm just going to prepare my bannetons and I'm using a mix of 50% uh, rice flour and 50% wheat. That way the dough will almost never stick to my Benetton unless it has over fermented. I'm just taking a bit of the mixed flour, adding to my sides. That's the primary place you want to, to put the flour because when you are shaping your dough, 
the two sides are the most important. The other parts don't matter too much. Putting a small bit at the bottom as well. So you see I'm adding quite a bit here to the sides and that's it. So these are ready to go. So now the dough has been resting for half an hour and let's see, see it already has some nice strength to it. So now I am going to add my salt and my sourdough. So here we are adding 200 grams of sourdough just using a wet hand and I have measured this feeding so I know that this glass contains 200 grams. You see here I almost have no sourdough left in my glass but this very little bit is the the remaining sourdough that I'm going to feed for the next time. I'm adding my salt right away. Here we got 22 grams of salt and that's what we need for two bread. This recipe is for the two bread. So now I just want to mix it a bit faster than before. And when the dough starts coming together and starts hitting the sides, then I know we have enough strength. And then I'm going to add the walnuts. Just going to show you with the camera the mixing speed. Okay, so now the dough is starting to come together. Just going to increase the speed a bit just to see. So now is the time to add the walnuts. So now we have not the full strength, but enough strength to, to add our walnuts. So now just going to mix it quickly. And I just really want to incorporate the walnuts. And that's more than enough. So that's it. I'm going to let the dough rest for 10 minutes before I'm moving it over to my my bowl over here. The dough has rested a little bit. Take a look at it. Looks great. So now I'm going to transfer it to my bowl over here. Just going to give it a bit of fat. Don't need that much. You can just use some oil on your hand. Using my dough cart to release it. To get all the bits. And the reason why I'm transferring to one of these clay bowls is because it's hard for me to get to the bottom of the dough here when I'm going to fold it. And I will give it a few folds, but this first technique I'm going to show you is called stretch and fold. So I'm just taking some of the sides here and pulling to the middle. So this one is a bit more rough than the regular coil folds. I'm going two rounds. And then I'm just going to let the dough rest afterwards. Like this. Going to leave it to rest for around 45 minutes and then I'll take a look at it again covering it and that's it. Now we have waited for 45 minutes after the first stretch and fold and we're already getting a bit of a volume on our dough volume and in this environment that we are in it's around 20 to 22 degrees here so the total bulk time in room temperature is about five hours. If you live in a warmer climate then you can sometimes finish the whole processes here in about three to four hours. If it's very cold one day, this can take up to six or seven hours for the bread to proof and ferment. Now I'm going to give it a coil fold and taking my hands at the top part and just stretching the dough underneath itself like this. 
Then I'm taking the bottom, doing the same thing. I'm just lifting it up and then pushing it in. Turning 90 degrees and doing the same thing. Like this. And now I'm just going to let the dough rest for another 30 minutes. And then I'll take a look at it and see if it's starting to just keep, or if it just keeps flattening out, then it doesn't have enough strength. If it can maintain its shape, then I won't give it another fold. So let's take a look at it in half an hour. So now the dough is holding its shape nicely. So I'm not going to give it another fold. Just going to show you guys how the, the structure looks. See, nice and strong. So just going to cover it and let it keep on bulking in room temperature. So I have set a timer for another three hours and then I'm going to take a look at it. And then it's time to shape it at that time and then get it into our proofing baskets. Dough has been proofing. We brought it home. It, see how big it is in size. It has proofed for, well, around four hours at this point. So now I'm just going to wet my hands and release it all the way around. And I'm just going to put it out on my table like this. I want to keep the tension at the top of the dough, that's why I'm lift it lifting it out without flipping it. Wet hand, some water. So the phone just went out of battery, but I'm using a wet left hand and I'm putting a bit of water on my bench knife, dividing the dough in two. Then I'm going to pre-shape it. Not shaping them too hard, because I want some of the air to stay inside. And you can see our other movies on pre-shaping. So over here, we just made some uh, croissant ready to go into the oven. We might make a movie on that later on. Very excited to see how they turn out. So anyway, these doughs will just rest here at the bench for 30 minutes and then we are going to finally shape them and put them in our bannetons. Those have been resting and now it's time to final shape. So I'm just going to add a bit of flour on top and a small bit on my bench. turning them around and then you want to make a rectangle and now I don't want to degas too much because they are filled with air so I'm just shaping lightly rolling Rectangle. Notice how I'm taking the bottom here. And we have a ton of these videos on shaping on our Instagram channel. Okay, so I'm keeping them like this. Bit of flour on top. Some people like to rest them at this point. Just for a bit. My bannetons are ready. And here you have the option to give them the squeeze or just to leave them as they are.
Now I'm going to celebrate this beautiful dough with a nice croissant. The doughs are filling up the Benettons nicely and now they are going for a rest in the fridge until tomorrow morning and then I'm going to bake them off and then we'll see the result. Okay, so for some reason I forgot to turn on the microphone right when I woke up. I was a bit tired but the doughs are looking great and they are filling out the Benettons very nicely. Here I'm doing the poke test and as you can see it just springs back very slowly and leaves a little mark. And that's a good sign showing that the dough is fermented. The oven is set to 260 degrees. It has been preheating for 45 minutes and in the bottom I have a baking steel. So I'm going to try to bake off two doughs at a time here to show you how that looks like. And I can just fit two doughs next to each other, giving them a quick score. Here I'm adding some hot water to create steam and then I'm going to turn off the oven for the first 20 minutes of the bake. So take a look down here. Our bread has steamed for 20 minutes and take a look. Two bread at a time. And now we are giving the crust the bake. So I'm just baking them for another 20 minutes on 220 degrees. And then we cut them open and then it's time to get to work. has finished baking just going to let it cool down for a bit Alright, so that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Please like the video and please subscribe to our channel if you want to see more. See you again next time.